We're here today with Mark and Debbie Smith of Shard Farm Standard Breeds. Shard is a very well-known name on the racetrack. So could you guys tell us how you got involved in the breeding industry? Uh, well, I, I came down from South Canterbury um, to uh, be with Mark and uh, brought my horses with me. Mark had just come out from town. He didn't know one horse from another. All he knew really was that the nose went past the winning post and made him money if it was first past the price. Um, and I used to do showing and show um, jumping and eventing and such like. And it just eventuated from there. And we decided that after um, family offered us a couple of brood mares, we decided that we would go and put one of the resultant colts through the sales. And we didn't know anything at that stage, like nothing to do with, we wanted a two minute brood mare, what does that mean? You know, what, what a black print mean? We didn't know anything. All I knew was that I could get this lovely little colt all doled up for the sales. I had one at that stage. And um, so we just went from there really. And that one colt actually um, was sold for $10,000 and we bought Slice Open out of that. And that was the beginning of it. Fantastic. So how many years ago was that? Oh, about 2000. 20 years ago, yeah, yeah 2000, 2000 was, yeah. About 21 years ago. So in that 21 years, what would you say, which horse would you say is the best horse that you have bred? Smiling Shard, without a doubt, yeah. So when you breed, are you breeding with the intention to sell at the yearling sales now because you've been through that sales process or do you keep some yourself to race? Is it a bit of a mix? It, it is a bit of a mix. I mean, we, we see what, what our foals bring on the ground and then we think we've got to keep, you know, a, a mare or, you know, a foal or two out of that family because you're getting a little bit older. So. Basically, if they're cots, they will go to sales. And you know, last, two years ago, we, we, we've kept a better's like mare. We've now kept an art major mare. And uh, yes, we, we do keep a mare here and there so we can keep the, the, that side of the family going. Yes. So do you also go and look at other bloodlines and yeah. buy fillies along the way and mares that are off the track? Or do you try to stick to what is um, your foundation bloodlines? We, we well, have bought we bought one out of the sales a well said filly that goes to the, uh, back to the undercover, undercover lover family, mm. and then two years ago we bought Zaria. So Zaria is related to the Pacey, Pacey Major family Pacey and Grace. Pacey and Grace, and it's Zaria and, and Aladdin's mother are full sisters, and then we went and bought Cracker Beach and there was this obviously Sun Beach mare about three years ago and that goes to the, back to the King of Swing family. So yeah, we, we do buy into other families yeah. now and then, yeah. It's always good to diversify that blood pool. So how many mares are you breeding from at the moment? 11, terrible number. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't actually um, have 11, no, we are too busy for that, but yeah, we have 11. And so 11 foals due this year uh, or? Nine, nine due this year. Yeah, we put Sly Shard down during the year because she was not producing anymore at the right by age of 21. And uh, that was a bit of a hard call. Well, it wasn't really because for the last 14 years, she's actually, she endemed and could never have a foal. So we were just luck of nature that we were able to carry on. And for the last three years, she hadn't produced anything and it cost us quite a bit of money, which wasn't an issue, but she was never going to be comfortable because she was, um, by, that, by the time that we put her down, she was actually um, insulin resistant and she couldn't be left out to the pasture because she'd get big and fat and then she'd um, get, have laminitis. So the nicest thing was to put her down at that time. So and it's, that's all, it's always hard when you've got those special bonds mm -hmm. with them. They are part of the family. So have you gone to a mix of stallions this year? Or? We have actually. Um, what's coming on the ground is a real mix of stallions and we're also going back to a mix of stallions. So you know, we've we've worked out that um, the best idea is to go to Better's Delight, do what you can afford to do. So we have a couple of those. Um, we're going to uh, Better's Wish, we're going to Lazarus. We've got um, three Mickeys and four seasides. Four seasides. So yeah, we're just a bit of everything. Um, this current lot that are going to the sales, we've got um, four, um, three fillies and a colt of Sweet Lou. And we've got a Captain Treacherous, which is gorgeous. He's just, he's lovely. He's named after uh, Mark's father. He's a beautiful colt. 
and um, sports writer Philly. The sports writer Philly, yeah, she's quite mm. special too. She's a bit naughty, though. <laughs> it <laughs> sounds <laughs> like you've got a lovely mix of horses there. So, um, heading towards the sales, have you got a bit of a standout lot? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely the captain, um, treacherous colt. He's just amazing. He's out of Romeo Shard's mother, so she's done Romeo Shard did the three wins prior to the cup day, so that was very good, um, timely winning for us. And so this horse is a gorgeous horse. He's not as big as uh, Romeo Shard, but he'll be, he'll be just every bit as nice. And you guys really, as many of the breeders do, follow your horses with interest. Yeah. You were saying earlier you still keep in touch with a lot of the trainers yeah. and purchases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really regularly ring them up. Like after sales, you give the guys, you know, like five or six months to break the horses in, and and you know, with their with their Southern Bred Southern Bred tour, you know, you build up this rapport. With, everybody and yeah you, know, you just ring them up and they have everybody's happy to chat and then as soon as they're breaking in yeah you know, you're waiting for them to go to the workouts and trials like Mama Shard the nice filly we sold um three years ago for you know the big money uh Jeff Whitaker's already said she's trialed and she's going back again this workout. Wednesday workout workout, yes. workout. yeah so it, it yeah it's we are always finding them in Australia we've got probably three or four running around in Australia right now so always looking up results and looking at the replays of the races, so you do keep in contact. So how many, um, we've touched on the sales, so how many are you doing for the sales this year? Oh, some idiot put their hand up for 14. So I'm not sure, that that's probably not a great idea. We both work full time. Uh, I've got two fantastic people here that actually um, do the basics of the horses every day. Mark and I come, come in at three o'clock in the afternoon and take covers on and off and put them away and feed them all and make sure everybody's happy. It works out really well. My ladies have been with me for about three years now, so we can't do without them. Um, so we started a bit earlier this year. We we're videoing between Christmas and New Year, which is really early for us. But uh, what that does is allow the uh, vendors to actually have a good look at our horses um, sooner than later and um, see how they develop between those videos and the sale ring. And we've all got to adapt a wee bit with the COVID times and having those videos out there certainly will be very handy and beneficial to those international buyers. And yeah. on that, Mark, you're very instrumental in organising the Southern Bread, Southern Red tour. Yes, um, I am. Yeah. So, <laughs> it usually gets divorced about the end of January. <laughs> so how, how are the plans going for that one? It's always I mean, a great trip. They're going really good. I mean, we've got about approximately 45 people on tour again and as soon as you ring up the the buyers they they have now just saying yes straight away and you know this this probably happened about four months ago so we we had everybody booked in now and of course you know it's a bit stressful with this COVID around but it looks like we're in the trap of life system now so let's hope there's no hiccups and everything runs smoothly but it's uh, it's well patronized and we've got um you know people from we've got about 15 out of Auckland and 25 out of Christchurch and we've got the perennials on it like you know Ken Barron and Crandell Giddy and and Ray Green. He's he is a Mr. Tour yet. So uh, you know, after winning the cup, let's hope we can sell him a good Southern Bred Southern Red horse out of our lot. But we've got um, a great variety in the catalogue. We've got seventy two yearlings this year, which is our biggest draft out of Southern Bred, and it's uh, you know there's a great catalogue there, and um, I'm sure we'll yeah you know, we'll have some uh, very well bred horses. Well, they are well bred, but some top lots coming out of that draft again. Well, the Southern Bred, Southern Red team, um, the way you guys unite and market them together and work together and put on the tour is absolute credit to you. Um, it's a wonderful initiative from a long time ago, and it's yeah. great to see it's still going. Well, Debbie actually, Debbie was one of the original committee members, so uh, I've just followed on from her, and you know, and uh, yes, I'm current, current chairman, and they. They want to keep me in there, so, so someone's doing a good job. But it was an initiative of you know Dave Kennedy, John Stive, and Mark O'Connor and Debbie. So it's uh, it's been going a while now, about twenty years. Very good though. But is, we can't do yeah. it on our own. No, it's a it's a group. We can do it. We can yeah. do it really well. Yeah. And you do do it very very well. So talking about doing things well, if you had one piece, if you had someone that was coming up to you to say they wanted to get into standard breeding, what's the one piece of advice you'd give them? Um, piece of advice that was given to me was um, save your pennies and go to the best standard you can afford to go to, but don't overcapitalise your mare. So you've got to get a good foundation mare first, and then go to the best standard you can afford to go to. Yeah. And always be prepared to sell. Meet the market. Like there's no use in going all this work, 
and you know getting to the sales and, and bringing, bringing a horse home because yeah as soon as you bring horses home that the costs start eating up straight you know from the flight for you so be prepared to meet the market and sell also yeah very good very sound advice well thank you so much for your time and wishing you the best of luck in the sale ring in february and i'm certainly looking forward to getting on that southern bread southern red tour and catching up with all the lovely people down here thank you charlotte thanks charlotte. charlotte thank you